Leroy. The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Millions of women all over America serve Parquet because it tastes so good. And now, in many states, you can buy this delicious Parquet Margarine in yellow quarter pound sticks. Yes, the same spread that tastes so good now comes in handy quarter pound sticks already colored a rich golden yellow and ready to serve. That Parquet, P A R K A Y. Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Well, another day is drawing to a close in Summerfield. The sun is slowly sinking behind the hills, and every little bird is returning to his nest. The great Gildersleeve is returning to his nest, too. In fact, he's just coming in the front door. Hello, everybody. I'm home. Hi, Uncle. Hello, Leroy. Hello, Miss Gildersleeve. Good evening, Bertie. Supper will be ready in just a few minutes. We got beef stew. Beef stew? Great. Where's Marjorie? She isn't home yet. Hubby's still out with Rodney Zimmerman. Rodney Zimmerman? Yeah, she's got a big crush on him. Oh? Who's he, another basketball player? Nah, he's a goof. <laughs> he's a senior class poet. A poet? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> You ought to see him, Monk. He's a tall, skinny guy that reads books all the time. He's a goof. No, Leroy, if Marjorie likes him, I'm sure Rodney is a very nice boy. He's a goof. No, Leroy. Oh, here she is. Hi, Marge. Hello, Marjorie. Marjorie, her old uncle, is saying hello. Oh, hello, Unky. Uh, see what I mean? Oh, she's as goofy as Rodney. <laughs> He wrote the most beautiful poem about me today. Who is Marjorie? Who is she? I wish I knew this mystery. Well, what? Lips like cherries, apple cheeks, soft complexion like a peach. Sounds like a fruit salad. <laughs> oh, Unky. Fairest of the fair mayhap. Rodney is a great big sap. <laughs> you little roughneck, you don't understand, Rodney. He's sensitive and artistic. He's a goof. He is not. That will do, Leroy. <laughs> you may go upstairs, young man, and get ready for dinner. Pronto. Okay. Oh, Rodney! Wherefore art thou, Rodney? <laughs> you little weasel. Yeah, no, Marjorie. Well, he shouldn't say those things. Just because Rodney's different. He's sweet and thoughtful. Of course, sometimes I wish he weren't so shy. What? Well, we're having our costume dance at school Friday night, and I know Rodney wants to take me, but he's too bashful to say anything. Oh? So I invited him over here tonight. Maybe if I encourage him enough, he'll ask me. Well, I'm sure he will, my dear. Well, better get ready for dinner now. All right. Oh, Rodney, he has such soulful eyes. A poet. What next? Excuse me. Yes, Bertie? Everybody ready for supper? The beef stew is done. All right. Roses are red, violets are blue... Okay, Bertie, serve the beef stew. Huh? I'm a poet, too. <laughs> that was a wonderful dinner. Now to light up a cigar. Rocky, Rodney will be here in a few minutes. What about it? Please don't smoke here in the living room. What? Rodney has a very sensitive nose. Oh, my goodness. I wonder if Bertie's got the hot chocolate and cookies ready. Oh, I'm sure she has. You've reminded her five times. And Leroy, now don't you act smart, Alecky, in front of Rodney. Oh, he's just got to ask me to that dance. If anything upsets him, he's liable to run right out of the house. Oh, don't worry, my dear. I'll get... Oh, there he is. Want me to get it? No, Bertie, I'll get it. Be nice now, Unky. Remember, he's terribly shy. Yes, I will. Well, hello, Rodney. Hello. I must have the wrong house. Yeah, no, no. You're Rodney, aren't you? Yes, but you're not Marjorie. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, he's 
See, I'm Marjorie's uncle. Oh. The one with the mustache. <laughs> Won't you come in? Well, I could come back some other time. No, no, come in. Well, all right. Marjorie's right here in the living room. Marjorie, here's Rodney. <laughs> Hello, Rodney. Hello. And this is uh, Marjorie's little brother, Leroy. Hi. Uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, Rodney. Thank you. Well, so you're Rodney Zimmerman. Yes, sir. <clears throat> yes, sir. Hmm. Well, Rodney, Marjorie's certainly been looking forward to your visit tonight. Yeah, she wants you to invite her to that. <laughs> Isn't it time for you to do your homework, my boy? Homework? Yes, up in your room. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Say good night to Rodney. Good night, Rodney. Oh, good night. <laughs> good night, Leroy. Good night, sister dear. <laughs> Polite little fellow. Well, so you're a poet, eh, Rodney? Yes, sir. Uncle Mort. Well, I take quite an interest in the poets myself. You do? Do you like Bobby Burns? Well, it's a pretty good cigar, but I usually smoke. <laughs> What, Marjorie? Aren't we keeping you from your work? Work? Well, I know I work from eight to five every day. Oh, 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 yes, of course. <laughs> Excuse me, Rodney, I have some work to do in my den. Uh, statistics. <laughs> I'll just leave you two alone. <laughs> good night, Uncle Morris. Yeah, good night. Yeah, good night, Rodney. Good night, sir. He looks like a poet, all right. Needs a haircut. Well, I hope he invites Marjorie. I think I'll leave the door open. See what he says. I'm glad you came over tonight, Rodney. So am I, Marjorie. <laughs> I love that poem you wrote about me, Rodney. I'm glad you did, Marjorie. <laughs> Ye gods, you'll never ask her at this rate. <laughs> Rodney. Yes? I've got my costume all picked out for the dance Friday night. You have? Yes. I'm going as Elizabeth Barrett Browning, and you'd look wonderful as Robert Browning. That is, if you were going to the dance. Yes. Can't he take a hint? Oh, <laughs> uh, Marjorie. Yes? About that dance. Yes? There's something I want to ask you. There is, Rodney. Ah, uh, here it comes. Hot chocolate coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bertie. And here's a cup of chocolate. You, Mr. Poet. Uh, thank you. And eat lots of them cookies. It'll fill you out a little. Thank you. Here's a little poem I wrote. If you want something more to eat, birdies, chocolate, can't be beat. <laughs> oh, my goodness, birdie, too. Uh, Rodney, you were saying something about the dance. Dance? Oh, yes. Well... Come on, Rodney. If you weren't going with anybody else... Yes? Yes? Well, I thought maybe you'd like to... Can't hear him. I'll just lean out of the door a little. <laughs> well, that is... Marjorie, why don't you go with... Oh, me to five. Oh, you... Archie! Uh, hello, children. Just thought I'd drop in for some chocolate. <laughs> Uncle Mort, you made Rodney spill his all over his best suit. Oh, that's all right. It's a brown suit. Well, I better be going. Good night. But Rodney... Good night, Marjorie. Rodney, wait. I sure did. <laughs> so this young poet got scared away, huh, Commish? Yeah. He fell right on the floor, huh? I bet he thought it was an earthquake. <laughs> it isn't funny, Floyd. Them poets are peculiar fellows, all right. Moody. Yeah, they sure are. Well, being a barber, I don't read poetry. Them guys never get haircuts, so why should I give them my business? <laughs> yes, well, I certainly spoil things for Marjorie. <sighs> why don't you go see this young Lord O'Brien and fix it up? Mm hmm. Well, I couldn't get him to invite her. He's a darn shy. Well, there's one thing that always works in a case like this. The green-eyed monster. Who? 
That's right, Commish. Jealousy. Oh, for heaven's sake. Hey, yeah, you just make him think some other kid's going to take her. He'll get over that shy stuff in a hurry. Well, I don't know, Floyd. I tell you, it works, Commish. Why, if it wasn't for jealousy, I wouldn't be married to Lovey today. You wouldn't? Nope. When I was going with her, I was about to run away and join the Navy. Then I noticed some guy leaving her house every time I'd go over to see her. You did? Yeah. Made me so jealous, I broke down. Proposed to Lovey. Hmm? After we got married, I found out that guy was just a bill collector. <laughs> make it worse, I had to pay the bill. <laughs> well, it might work with Rodney at that. Sure. I could tell him that her old boyfriend, Wally Hoff, wants to take her. That's the stuff. Lay it on thick. Tell him this Hoff kid's nuts about her. By George Floyd, I'll do it. Wait till I see that skinny poet. a boy. Can't miss, Commish. When the green-eyed monster bites you, look out. I wonder where it'll bite Rodney. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Marjorie. Rodney, what a surprise. Come in. Thank you. Just thought I'd stop by on my way home from school. Marjorie. Yes? Marjorie. Yes? Marjorie, will you go to the dance with me? Oh, I'd love to, Rodney. I thought you'd never ask me. Well, I've been afraid to. I thought maybe you'd rather go with Wally Hoff. Wally Hoff? Well, you used to like him, and I thought maybe you still did. Oh, that's silly. I don't like Wally anymore. In fact, I can't stand him. Well, I'm glad of that, because if I thought you still liked him, I'd go out of your life forever. Rodney, oh, I'm so excited. I want to show you my costume. I'll run up and get it. Gee, she likes me better than Wally Hoff. I never would have thought... Well, Rodney. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. You're just the boy I wanted to see. Rodney, I've got some bad news for you. What? I'm afraid you've got a rival for Marjorie, my boy. A rival? Who? Wally Hoff. Wally Hoff? Why, well, I thought she didn't like him anymore. That's what you think. <laughs> but she said she couldn't stand him. Well, she may have told you that, but you know how women are. Yes, I guess I do. Rodney Zimmerman, you've been a fool. Huh? Oh, hello, Uncle Mort. Rodney, here's my costume. I hope Wally Hoff likes it. What? You don't have to spare my feelings, Marjorie. Your uncle told me how you still like Wally. What? Yep, I sure did. <laughs> I'm sorry I asked you to go to the dance, Marjorie. You asked her? Oh, my goodness. Rodney, listen to it's me. It's all right, Marjorie. You go with Wally. I'll just sit in my room and read Tennyson. Tennyson? Rodney, I was only joking. Farewell forever. Rodney. Oh, Auntie, look what you've done. Now you'll never ask me. What? Green-eyed monster, wait till I see that Floyd. Hi there, Bertie. What's new? I declare, Mr. Wall, that Leroy just taught me something new. What now, Bertie? That Leroy took a slice of bread... Red parquet margin on it real thick, and then sprinkled a little brown sugar on top and started eating. Well, I thought everybody knew about that. Bread, parquet, and brown sugar is a wonderful between-meal treat. Well, I tried it, and it sure tastes good. It's so simple. Well, parquet tastes good on everything, Bertie. It's delicious on rolls and waffles and pancakes. It adds flavor to hot vegetables and casserole dishes, too. And believe me, parquet margarine is certainly economical. Why, it costs only about half as much as the most expensive spread. I know it's economical, Mr. Wall, but what's important to me is how good it tastes. Well, that's important to everyone. That's why millions of women serve parquet margarine every meal. Parquet is the margarine of craft quality, you know. It's economical, nourishing, and delicious. In most states, you can buy golden yellow parquet and quarter-pound sticks all ready for table use. That's what Leroy was getting into, the yellow parquet. Sure was a treat with that brown sugar on it. It's a treat no matter how you eat it, Bertie. Parquet margarine is always a treat because it tastes so good. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine. (laughs) 
Well, it's the night of the costume dance at the Summerfield High School. But it's an unhappy night for Marjorie. Her date with Rodney fell through thanks to Mr. Fixit, the great Gildersleeve. She's locked herself in her room, and the great man's trying to patch things up. Marjorie. Marjorie. Dinner's ready. We're having meatloaf. She can't still be mad at me. Let me alone. I never want to speak to you again. <laughs> Guess she can. Uh, hello, Bertie. Oh, hello, Mr. Gilsleeve. <laughs> Dinner almost ready? <laughs> yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Too bad about that dance tonight. Marjorie not going. Yes, sir. Poor little Marjorie. Well, I'm sorry it turned out this way. I was just trying to get Rodney to take her, but it didn't work. It sure didn't. Poor little Marjorie. Bertie, I said I was Everybody's just... going to be at that dance, laughing and having a good time. Everybody but poor little Marjorie. <laughs> Bertie? Yes, sir. All them other girls will be there with their boyfriends. All but poor little Marjorie. <laughs> But, Bertie, I told you I was just trying to fix things. You fix things all right. Poor little Marjorie. <laughs> I don't want any dinner. Hey, I'll get some dinner ready yet. I don't know, Leroy. I don't feel like eating. What? Poor little Marjorie. <laughs> I spoiled everything. Gee, I'm just because that goofy poet won't take her. Why didn't she go by herself? Well, you know how girls are. They don't like to go to a dance without an escort. And it's too late for anybody to ask her, so... Say, I know somebody who could take her to that dance. Who? Me. What? Well, it's a costume party. And in the costume, I'd look just like a high school boy. Are you kidding? Huh? <laughs> well, a fat high school boy. <laughs> oh, for course. Say. Sure. By George, I'll do it, Leroy. I'll go down to Hogan Brothers' costume department right now. Put on. Yes, sir. Tonight I'll be a high school kid again. I hope some pretty teacher takes me out in the cloakroom. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, Penrod. Boy, what a character. <laughs> help you, sir? Uh, yes. Yes, I want to rent a costume. I'm going to the high school dance tonight. You? <laughs> well, yes, I'm taking my niece. Oh, <laughs> I'd like to get something that would make me look romantic. Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I could go as Romeo. Sir, we don't have Romeo costume size 48. Oh, well, do you have any poet costumes? Not in your size. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid I have just one costume left that will fit you. What's that? A lion. <laughs> Did you say a lion? Yes. It was used in the senior class production of The Wizard of Oz. The cowardly lion. Yeah. Fatty Milligan played the part. That's ridiculous. How can I dance in a lion skin? Well, just hold your partner with one arm and your tail with the other. <laughs> My tail. Now look here. And I can't help you. That's all we have. Well, got to have a costume. Guess I'll have to take it. Very well. Just a moment. A lion. And a cowardly one at that. Well, I got to do it for Marjorie. Here you are, sir. Hmm. You can use that dressing room right there. Thanks. Not much room in here. Must have been a broom closet. I better take my coat off first. Well, well, let's see this thing. Guess I unzip it here in the back. It certainly feels heavy. I'd hate to be a lion and have to wear one of these all the time. No wonder they look so sleepy. Well, better climb into it, I guess. Oop, wrong way. Tail's supposed to be in the back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, guess I'm in, all right. Well, if I can just reach that zipper in the back. Mm. Mm. Dark in here. Whew. 
Mothballs. <laughs> if I can just pull this mouth open. Ooh, big teeth. <laughs> there. Now I can see, anyway. What's that? That's me in the mirror. <laughs> I look pretty good. Might as well leave it on. Almost time for the dance, anyway. Yep. I make a pretty fierce-looking lion, all right. Gildersleeve, king of the beasts. Wow! <laughs> I think I'll go out and join the Lions Club. <laughs> driving this car in a lion skin. Kind of hard to steer with these paws. Uh-oh, there's a policeman standing there in the corner. He's the one that gave me a ticket last month. I'll have some fun with him. Hey, officer! What? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> he even dropped his billy club. <laughs> yeah, that'll teach him. I think I'll drop in the drugstore and scare Peavy. Slam the door on my tail. <laughs> Didn't even feel it. <laughs> there. I know. I'll crawl in on all fours and really scare Peavy. <laughs> there he is behind the candy counter. Watch him jump. Whoa! Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> supposed to be a lion. So I gathered. What are you intending to do, Mr. Gildersleeve? Join the circus? No, Peavy. I'm taking Marjorie to the school dance tonight. How's that? Well, she didn't have a date, so I'm sort of substituting. In this outfit, I'll look just like a high school boy. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> all right, Peavy. Say, maybe I'd better call Marjorie and tell her to be all ready, huh? Well, there's the phone booth. Help you tell. Yeah. Guess I can dial with one of my claws. Why do they make these booths so small? It'd be hard to get in with this lion's outfit on. Maybe I can squeeze in. The fur is slippery. Sure tight. And I'll make it this time. I'm stuck. Peavy. And what's the trouble, Mr. Gildersleeve? What's it look like? Peavy, I'm stuck in this thing. What am I going to do? Looks like you have to go to that dance as a phone booth. <laughs> Very funny. Do something, Peavy. Well, oh, good evening, Peavy. Good evening, Judge. Well, what's going on here? There's a lion stuck in my phone booth. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh. Well, I was going to use the phone, but it looks like the lion is busy. <laughs> Gildy, why are you wearing that lion skin? Because they didn't have any tigers. Just stop asking foolish questions, Hooker, and get me out of here. All right. I know. Let's pull him out with the tail, Peavy. All right. Ye gods, watch it, fellas. This tail doesn't belong to me. Grab a hold, Peavy. Now, one, two, three, pull. Oh! Oh! oh my goodness, his tail came off. <laughs> you fellas are certainly a big help. I'll get out of here myself. Out of my way. I've got to get home. Oh, Gildy. What? You forgot your tail. <laughs> oh, wear it yourself, you old goat. Marjorie, I'm home. Marjorie. Uncle Mark. Oh, there you are. <laughs> in your costume, too. Okay, what are you doing in that lion's outfit? Well, this is my costume. I'm going to escort you to the dance. Oh, well, that's awfully sweet of you, Unky, but Rodney's taking me to the dance. Huh? Uh-huh. He phoned me and we've made up. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Oh, I'm certainly glad, my dear. Whew. Getting awfully hot in this lion skin. I think I'll unzip it. Darn zipper stuck. Guess I bent it in that phone booth. 
Marjorie, maybe you can unzip it. All right, Unky. Well, it is stuck all right. I'll just... Oh, there's Rodney. Excuse me. Yeah, but Marjorie. Hello, Rodney. Hello, Marjorie. Marjorie, I... Lion! That's just my uncle. What? Hello, Rodney. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you look awfully handsome in your costume, Rodney. And you look beautiful, Marjorie. Thank you. Marjorie, will you please unzip me? It's hot in here. How did I ever misunderstand you? How did I ever let you? How did I ever get into this? <laughs> Marjorie, I'm suffocating. Take my hand, Elizabeth Browning. All right, Robert Browning. Good night, Unky. Marjorie, you come back here. Come, my fair one. Vision bright. Oh, what a happy, happy night. Yes. <laughs> That's what he thinks. How am I going to get... Is that you, Uncle? Yes, Leroy. A lion? Oh, for corn's sake. Listen. Listen carefully, Leroy. I'm going to try to get out of this thing. See if you can unzip me. Okay. Uh. Uh. Uncle won't budge. Oh, my goodness. Uncle, I just... Poem. What? Starlight, star bright. It looks like you'll be stuck all night. <laughs> we'll hear from the great Gildersleeve again very shortly. Here's good news worth remembering, ladies. In all states where laws permit, you can now get yellow parquet. Yes, parquet, the same delicious spread with a wonderful flavor, now comes in handy quarter-pound sticks already colored a rich golden yellow. You'll find yellow parquet costs a little more, largely because of the federal coloring tax. But it's a real saving for you in time and trouble. Try the new yellow parquet in quarter-pound sticks. Remember, where state laws permit, you can get this delicious spread, golden yellow, ready to serve. Of course, you can still buy white parquet at the low economy price. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to tell you about a way you can help build national security at the same time, build your own security. That way is to buy United States savings bonds. You see, United States bonds are an investment in future opportunities. Opportunities like a retirement income, an education for your children, or a new home. Now, the best way to provide for future opportunities, of course, is to save regularly by signing up for the payroll savings plan where you work or the bond-a-month plan where you bank. I don't think you'll find a safer or more patriotic way to put more opportunity in your future than by investing in United States savings bonds. Thank you. Wow. Good night. <laughs> the Great Gilda's Lead is played by Harold Perry. It was written by Gene Stone and Jack Robinson with music by Jack Meeker. Included in the cast are Walter Kentley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Dick LeGrand. This is John Wall saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday for a special Gildersleeve program featuring as our guest that very popular singer, Miss Kay Starr. Well. You'll like this pleasant, quick way of making leftovers more delicious. Just add a little craft prepared mustard and you add a lot of tang. Hidden flavors in boiled ham, sausage, most any meat pop right out. Every bite tastes better. Now you can get two kinds of craft mustard. Salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer a milder flavor, and craft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both kinds in your pantry. Then with every meat dish, hot or cold, just add a little mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Craft prepared mustard. This is NBC.